Little Miss Sunshine. It's very Bill Finn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the second any the music starts, you're like, Bill Finn musical. Yeah. I hear it. Hmm. I really liked the music, uh, especially his chords that he makes are always so beautiful. It's a very small cast, but when they're all singing, um, there's a lot of beautiful sounds that are coming out of it. I guess my overall feeling of the show itself is that there were a lot of parts that I think specifically, like that scene specifically, I was like, I didn't like that scene. But I have like positive feelings about the show overall because it did find it enjoyable. Yeah. But there was a lot of like, I really hated the set and the whole concept of the set design. I didn't like it. I didn't have a problem with the set design. I was fine with it. The, um, I liked I, how they used the chairs. I liked how they used the chairs and I thought there was a lot of really good movement and yeah. spatial work and I liked the I liked when they would go out of reality to expand the space. Mm -hmm. Um because like when they were in the car? Yeah, because yeah. you're stuck in the car. They and did that very, very, very well. Yes. I the only thing because it was so realistic unless that was happening yeah. was Olive was like walking around the van. Well, that's a personal problem you have because you kept on being like, she's not wearing a seatbelt. Well, yeah. Which obviously we're like worried about, but you're also sort of like, don't let the fact that that child is not wearing a seatbelt like distract you from well, enjoying the show. It's less about her not wearing a seatbelt because, and more like she's like standing up in the car and walking around. And it wasn't. But it's like a bus. Yeah, you have to sit down. You can't walk around. Are you are you talking about physical space or because they're driving? Because they're driving. Okay, no, that's a personal problem you have. <laughs> Don't let that affect your enjoyment of the show. Well, the re but that's what I'm saying. The rest of it, it didn't necessarily affect it. I was a little distracted by it. But okay, that is on me. But I don't understand why she wasn't just sitting down. There's no reason for her not to be sitting down. I did really love how they moved about the space yes. when they were in the car. I loved that choreography. I thought it was brilliant. I loved, mm -hmm. they did a lot of like weird, like funny movements that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought the way that they dealt with the road trip aspect in that respect was really, really great. Yeah. I think this maybe these aren't the scenes that you were talking about, but to break that up and also to add to the show, there were some flashback scenes. There was one flashback scene and then like a there was a scene to add information and depth to Roy O'Malley's character, the uncle. Mm -hmm. That I understand why it was there. I don't know that it was super successful. I think I would have rather had Rory O'Malley's character have a, like a heartfelt ballad about his struggles. Hmm. Who should we start with? Should we just go alphabetically? Uh, maybe we should go alphabetically. Stephanie J. Bloss. Stephanie J. Bloss. <gasps> Tony nominee Stephanie J. Bloss. She was she was really good. Oh, she, she was, was fantastic. really good. She, she was so funny. Super funny. Um. And she's kind of a goofy lady in real life, and yeah. so she was like really game for everything that was going on on stage, and really like really motherly. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. She was so like motherly and comforting, and yeah. like you kind of just want to like I don't know, tell her your problems at a kitchen table with some cookies and milk. Um. Also, beautiful voice. Yeah. In the background. Yeah. No, like, big Stephanie J. Block well, ballads, she didn't but... Have her, yeah, she didn't have her own song, but I wouldn't even say in the background. Like, she had some wailing moments, and... Obviously. It's She's always... She's your legit voice. <sighs> I think it's always great when you have someone with such a big voice like that in such a small cast, and with music of Bill Finn, where you're expected to be able to blend so well with everyone mm -hmm. else's voices. Um, that they all just sounded so great together. Hannah Nordberg. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. She was so great. She was so great. hilarious. Her and Sydney Lucas could do the flashback scenes in Sideshow. Oh, I was like, baby Sideshow? <laughs> baby Sideshow? That's weird. Um, she was fantastic. She was so funny. Yeah. I love when they make little kids swear. Yes. They put her in a little bit of a fat suit. Which... No, I mean, no disrespect to anyone who's put in a fat suit, because that's not their decision. Yeah. 
but there's no chubbier little actresses out there. Well, because I think they were really trying to emulate the visual of how Abigail Breslin looked in the movie. But first of all, Hannah is like a really skinny child. And Abigail was like normal sized child. Who right. then they like put this weird belly on because it looks hilarious. Yeah. Um, because she's like so awkwardly proportioned, I guess. And so I think they were trying to like keep up with that like awkward right. proportion that's like funny. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. And again, like, it's nothing to do with that girl. Yeah. She was absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. She was perfection. Great little voice. She's going to be great. Should she choose to continue in the... Of her own free will? Well? Am I forgetting, or did they not have the part where she goes up to the beauty queen and asks her if she eats ice cream? Uh, that was not in there. That was a thing that I missed from the movie. I wasn't doing too much back and forth comparison, especially because I haven't seen the movie in a while. Yeah. And in the end, they end up all eating it together. Right. I think that situation says so much about, like, her parents. Yeah. And how they interact with each other mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And, like, how her father's insanity about his own, like, his own insecurities about success, mm -hmm. like, are, you know, how they get fed into the children and stuff like that. Like, that metaphor with the ice cream is so important. And at the end, when she asks Miss California, like, do you eat ice cream? And she's like, I love ice cream. Um, she doesn't eat ice cream. I mean, she <laughs> probably eats it okay. in... She gets samples. She gets one sample and she, a month. Like, obviously, it's not I as... Simple as Miss California being like, I eat ice cream. I'm sure she, she's I'm not like she eats joking. ice cream every day. That's the point, you guys. It's about moderation. Yeah. Life lessons right. from Patty and Emily. <laughs> um, but like, oh, well, and I it think just says so much. And I feel like they had that part where, the, where she's like, I want to get ice cream. And had him like cutting in being like, well, do you think Miss America eats ice cream? Or is Miss America fat like you? It's basically what he's saying mm -hmm. and like Cheryl didn't really stand up for her she was sort of like doing that background motherly thing where she's sort of like oh I just don't, so good. I don't, don't say that <laughs> but isn't actually doing anything yeah. about it and I maybe this is my own anger but I feel like sh she would have said more than that well she, I mean, towards the end of the scene, she is like, and let's, we're gonna go get ice cream when I come back from right. the bathroom. And Olive just says, I don't want it. And that's the end of it. Right. And in the, in the movie, they are all like, okay, that's fine. We're gonna eat this ice right. cream. It's so delicious. And then Olive's like, yeah. okay, I want some. Don't eat it all. No. You know, so it's like, it can be fun and you can eat some ice cream. And... Stop being a dick, Dad. Yeah. And maybe Will Swenson was great, but the character, maybe that's one of the reasons that it, well, you know, well, it was like missing a layer or something. I love Will Swenson. Yeah. I think he's fantastic. I think he was miscast in this show, however, because there was something about Greg Kinnear in the movie where he had that like disgusting charisma that those self-help people have mm -hmm. where they're just like you can see them with like a fake tan and a headset being like do you want to change your life um and being like so obnoxious and greg kinnear like had that but was also like the failure of that mm -hmm. and will was i don't know he didn't have that like <laughs> that i think he needed yeah but I love him, and he's got a great voice. Yeah. And I don't know. I thought he was great. I don't know if it was him being miscast as that element just wasn't present in the character. I thought that that character was a little muddled and lost. Yeah. Rory. Rory O'Malley. <laughs> Rory O'Malley. I thought he was great. He was great. He's great. He was fantastic. He had a beard. He did. He looked great. He looked great. He looked really He's good. He's great. Like His it. voice is like so well suited to Bill Finn's music. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Sanchez. Oh, she was hilarious. She was hilarious. Oh my god. She was so funny. Oh my, in that pageant scene with her and Josh when they just start like, 
<laughs> going off on their whole that whole pageant scene yeah. was hilarious. And yeah. Wesley's character that came back in. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my god. Like Just all of them, they were such like that pageant scene. Like really great, strong <laughs> writing for like those little characters that come in and immediately establish themselves and who they are and what they're all about. Yeah. It was great. I didn't like the projections on those screens. When oh, I thought they were okay. I mean, I could have. Done I thought at them, the but... end when they were trying, when they were like on their last oh. leg, getting into the pageant, yeah. and it was the actual mapping, like rerouting, rerouting. I liked that, but what other projections were happening? There was projections did I, like, happening not through the entire it? Oh, show. I did not notice them at the all. The entire show, like on yeah, on those screens in the back wall. The entire show there was projections oh. happening. And I mean most of them were just like the exact projections that we hate being the I mean like, uh, it was like it's like environment projections. Yeah, because oh, it's I like road trips. So I guess it's like it is road trips and so it's just sort of like trains well, passing by. But it's just not necessary. I was it just gonna doesn't say, even need to be up there. We know they're on a road trip and that they're driving. Well this is what I was gonna say. I literally did not notice them and never once was I like, I'm confused, where are they? Yeah. So you don't need them. Because they're not necessary. They're... I mean, I realize, I guess, you were trying, like, you're trying to add depth to the set because don't... you don't have much of a set, which no. I was fine with. Let the but depth I... of my imagination yeah, I didn't, be that. I didn't, honestly, I'm surprised I didn't notice them because those are the things that kind of bother me. But overall, the show is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really funny and really enjoyable. Yeah. We just some structural issues to work out. <laughs> Keep working on it. You know. If you want our notes, you have this YouTube video. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not a, it's not set in stone yet. It's not licensed yet, so <clears throat> still time to revise. She's a very kinky girl. The kind you don't take home to mother. I think that I would be an excellent replacement for uh, Logan Rowland. He does have a song to sing. 